We never, there was never any argument about climbing roses. There was never any argument about multiflora roses. And we'll talk about the differences there. But those never really got bred too much. The standard climbing rose is uh, a white thorn and the, and the like are still very prevalent. And those are the ones you'll see out there. David Austin has its traditional ones too. And he's, by the way, David Austin roses have very nice names, very English names. Yes. The, the Darcy Brussel. Oh yes, who's Darcy Brussel? I have no idea. No, but it, that deep red or the, or the Munstead wood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love those deep red David Austin roses. Yep. yep. Yeah, those are two of my favorites. So, uh, modern shrub roses. Uh, I'm talking about knockouts and oh so easies. The first one was carpet rose. It came in a pink pot. I don't know if you remember that. I don't. Okay, it came in a pink pot, and everybody. This is about the time when everybody, uh, the the different brands were coming out with different colored pots and i remember the industry saying i don't want those pink pots. i don't want those blue pots what's with the green pots i want the black pot well now it's yeah give me the blue pot give me give me the pink pot because it's readily identifiable as yeah. a certain type of product right right and and now the black pot is just oh that's a standard old rose or standard old type of, the old tea roses yeah yeah, yeah you know Nothing special. Yeah. Oh, my. But I think it's cool, though, right? Like, that's, I mean, the genetics and working through that to get the desirable char- characteristics. So that, you know, when you are planting some of the, something and it has that breeding brand behind it, you know, yep. that you grab that David Austin pot. That square, dark green pot. It's a very elegant pot, isn't oh, it? Oh, man. It's, I mean, does that make the gift? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I think that's really cool that, you know, it's an appreciation. It's almost like. You know, now with Netflix learning about what goes on in the kitchen with, you know, the chef's table where you now are learning more about the chef and and with these breeds, we're learning, you know, more about these breeders and what they're giving us as far as or accomplishing in their breeding programs. You know, something like the knockout roses with the number of of flowers coming on those bushes and the reblooming. Right. Um, I think that's really cool. And you only have to look at the pot to identify the product. David Austin Rose, you know it's going to be a good rose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you may want to check it out to see what color it is or whatever, but you know it's going to be a quality English rose, and it's going to have fragrance, and it's going to have thorns, and it's going to have everything Shakespeare said it should have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, back back then, uh, the Mediland Rose was uh, the probably the standard landscape rose. It's probably not even sold anymore because it was kind of rambling uh, and it had some problems but it had far less problems than uh, the tea roses and, and it filled a spot in, in the landscape yeah it could climb a little bit on a picket fence or something like that but mm-hmm. the fairy rose was on right there too that was very very popular but in, in the 1990s it went it has gone away really yeah it's hard to buy the, the fairy rose now um, yeah, I mean, I would kind of, even if we just kind of summarize this to a lot of the, there's the the type of growth you're looking for, whether it's a a shrub rose or the almost long stem like tea roses, mm-hmm. the climbing rose. And then, you know, we've kind of, what you see is like you've got your knockouts, which have their own definitely distinctive flower on them. Your David Austin and then... You know, you can get into your tea roses, and then yeah. within there, you have your the different growing right. types. Well, I, you know, I, I really like the Oh So Easy series, which is the short PW proven winner yep. rose collection. Um, they are they are small for small yards. They can you can put them along the sidewalk, and they're not going to just attack anybody as they walk by. But they uh, the, the last thing that was breeded into them and they read into every proven winter rose as well as the knockout rose uh-huh. and most shrub roses is reblooming. You don't have to do anything to get reblooms. And it'll bloom from June to October. Yeah. Now, is that a big difference from the tea rose, the finicky tea rose that only came out in June and maybe rebloomed sometime later on, but unpredictable? But those are awesome. You know, you just enjoy them in the landscape throughout the summer. Yeah, you don't have to do anything to them. Yeah, well, so, mean, sounds oh so easy. It is oh so easy. <laughs> so you want to talk about different types of roses? Yeah, okay. yeah. 
So basically, there's what five or six types. Six, let's say six for types. Well, that's how we'll divide them. You have the T rows, whether they be traditionally uh, uh, grafted or their own root. Okay, yep. and those tend to be single roses, large flowers, thorns. Most of them, some thorn, no thorns for others. Uh, and uh, fragrant or non-fragrant, depending on the variety. But they were a single stem with a big flower. That, and you could prune them to do that. Yeah. The climbing roses. Climbing roses are just incredible if you have the space and the wall and the and the and the trellis to, to put them on. In North Windham Center, there is a new dawn rose. Uh, it has to be a new dawn rose that I recognize. And right in the center of the town, across from the uh, I think it was the, it's the old post office. It's right. At this, there's a junction of five streets. Mm-hmm. There's an old, I'm going to say, Federalist house that is two stories, and this rose has grown up over the years to the second floor. It is the most, it, and it takes over that whole side of the house. It is the most remarkable climbing rose I know of. Wow! And if you ever get out to North Windham, right in the center of town, yeah, you need to look for that. And if it's in June, you'll you'll see it right away. It's incredible. Just a wall of flowers. Pretty much a tree of flowers tree growing of flowers. up the side of the of the house. One dimension. Very cool. Yeah, two dimensions. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the climbing roses all they, they they have large flowers generally, and they need some sort of support because they're going to go places. And you have to kind of train them. You don't really prune them, but you, you train them to go where you want them to go. Okay. Okay. Multiflora roses. Uh, probably the most popular, uh, most well-known multi-flower rose is the, the uh, invasive Japanese rose that we uh, will be coming up here in June. You usually smell them. They're very fragrant before you see them. And they're a little flower. I think a light pink, I would say, a light pink flower. But the fragrance is overwhelming. Um, and you really need to enjoy the fragrance because the shrub is just one big monster. It climbs up trees. It climbs over your shrubbery. It is invasive. The birds love the berries uh, or the hips, yep. and they plant them hither and yon uh, wherever it'll grow. And it doesn't need full full sun where most roses need full sun. This one doesn't. Now, the commercial multi-flower rose, floral rose is more like um, a rambling tea rose, I'm going to say. But the cluster of the flowers is not single like a tea rose it's a cluster of flowers that can be you know anywhere from a quarter size to half dollar maybe or even a little bit bigger but Mm -hmm. you'll see them at the end instead of one flower at the end of a stem there'll be a handful of flowers and uh they tend to need a little structure to them to be to be held up because that pom-pom of flowers uh when it gets wet it just kind of sags all over the place so not not as popular a rose as the rest of them, but still there. Okay. The shrub rose, we talked about the modern shrub rose. Uh, they've gotten smaller, more compact. They've gotten ever-blooming, and they've become fragrant. Um, and they're f- specifically now marketed for smaller yards. We don't have large yards like we, we used to. Right. Okay? We don't have Elizabeth Parks that we can sprawl out the roses everywhere. Yeah. We don't have rose gardens and a gardener to get, to tend to them. No, we don't. So most of the roses, I would say, that are sold right now are shrub roses mm-hmm. just because of the way we live. And right. We're enjoying them more up close than from afar. And from afar, they're wonderful too, yes. Yeah. But, you know, uh, no one ever thought of putting a rose alongside of a, a, an entranceway. But if you got the sun, <laughs> why not? The Rosa Rogosa, the Rogosa roses, these are the beach roses that Cape Cod has become famous for. They're all, uh, they grow in eh, fairly poor soil. They like full sun. They demand full sun. And they can get out of hand a little bit. But the flower is about two inches across. It's either pink, white. There are some varieties that are purple. Uh-huh. Uh, and they are extremely fragrant. They're like the Japanese multiflower rose. They are not natives. They're brought in from Japan. Um, Beach roses are? Beach roses are. Oh, wow. Yeah. When the Japanese landed on Plymouth Rock, uh, they brought along the beach rose. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but Cape Cod is famous for rose hip jelly. Well, Rosa Rogosa produced these large, um, I'm going to say nickel to quarter size hips that are high in vitamin C. And, and the hips are uh, like a post-flower. They are the fruit. Fruit. 
Yes. Yeah. They're the fruit. So you never want to pick the the that had a, a rugosa rose because you want the hips and they start off green and turn red and then the fall they're wonderful and if you can get enough of them you can make jelly like a real cape cotta there we go yeah and the birds like them right well the birds like them if they're a big enough bird yeah the birds prefer the uh multiflora rose the japanese multiflora rose because they're the size of that's that 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 hip is the size of a pea oh i see if you're a turkey yeah you know, oh okay yeah <laughs> Uh, and then there are native roses. Now, we have native North American roses here. Uh, in, in, one is a R- Rosa virginiana, and one is Rosa palustris. Now, palustris is known as the swamp rose, and virginiana is known as the Virginia rose. Go figure. Uh-huh. You know. but, and they're very much, they're single flowers. Uh, they're, they're natives. They are just as tough as nails. Uh, palustris being named the swamp rose can take a little bit wetter soils roses as a whole like well-drained soils but palustris can take uh, damper soils and they are just uh, of course all all single roses are uh, attract uh, pollinators of all types bees uh, uh, beetles butterflies but back in the day before the english brought over their english rose uh, this was the only thing, only port in a storm, so to speak. And I don't know whether, speaking of English rose, I don't know whether I uh, explained English rose enough as a more carnation, having many, many petals. Did I yeah. say that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And that's very distinctive, very distinctive about an English rose. I kind of think like it almost has that same effect of like an opening peony, like just so many exactly. petals bunched up. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact that the English wore the roses, those were single roses. Those are a single petal white rose and a single petal red rose. You study it, Google it. We're gonna have to. Well, yeah. either that or I'm lying. Well, yeah. <laughs> cool. So, you know, I mean, I mean, I think it's it's kind of overwhelming of how many different types of roses there are and the different varieties in each. But I think it's good that we can have the confidence that our breeders and what's available today are to the point of where they definitely have the enjoyable aspects where we have the the flowers we like and the colors we like but also we have the fragrance back and Mm -hmm. um or some with fragrance and you know the thorns be what they are but these are hardier plants than what we had before the the oh yeah the the breeding's made it a lot easier to enjoy this than oh definitely definitely if you uh, uh, own root roses, uh, shrub roses, I don't think climbers have ever been a problem. Uh, and then the native uh, rose, uh, it's the it was the tea rose that was brought over from Europe that was adopted by us and the rich and famous uh, who could afford gardeners and gardens to to do that to tend to them and to put all the effort them. in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the tricky part, and that was almost a status symbol. Yeah, you know. If you had a rose garden, holy cow. Well, I mean, even let's go back to that rose parade, the uh, the Valley Hunt Club yeah. that puts on the rose parade and started it back in the late 1800s. That is, you know, a pretty prestigious club. And, you know, they started it with, you know, let's hold a festival to tell the world about our paradise. <laughs> so I think there's a, you know, definitely the status to it. Yeah. But our roses, definitely we get to enjoy, you know, the the benefits of, you know, a lot of breeding and very talented breeders like the David Austins. Yes. So getting into more of the care of it, you know, what for generally speaking, how do we care for a rose or what should we be even sort of starting of like where considerations of where we should plant it? Mm-hmm. Well, there's really no secret. I mean, generally speaking, okay. Roses need a minimum, minimum of six hours of sun. They could take 24 hours of sun. They you just put them out in the middle of the yard and let them go. They need good drainage as a whole. The only exception might be the uh, Rosa Palustris, uh, which can take a little bit more uh, uh, moisture in the soil. Uh, although they do demand a constant moisture. They're, they're, they're a little bit finicky in that way. Mm-hmm. And it's not unlike a hydrangea. Right. Okay, they, they got to be moist. They can't be dried out but they don't want it too wet. 
Um, so as a result, mulching is almost uh, mandatory when to, 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 to serve, 